If you're watching this video, you've probably already seen that audio plugins can be separated in two main categories, native and DSP. But what is the difference between the two? The answer is actually very simple. But before I give you the answer, please make sure you hit the subscribe button so you're the first one to know every time I release new information about music production and music mixing. I trust you on that. The difference between the two simply lies in where the processing takes place. Native plugins will be handled by the host computer's processor, while DSP plugins will be processed by devices external to the computer. If you still don't understand the difference between the two, it's normal. Don't worry. Just keep watching this video and you will soon understand. I sure fucking hope so. Well, let's start with native plugins. Native processing, also called host-based processing, allows the plugins to be completely processed by the computer's processor. This means that you don't need any external hardware to make them work. As a reminder, audio plugins are digital tools that can be used either standalone or through your DSP. And they always need real-time calculation that will have to be done by a processor. In this case, as the processing happens in the computer, you will have a constant access to plugins hoping, of course, that it has enough resources to run all the plugins. Because the more plugins you use, the more CPU you will use. By the way, CPU means Central Processing Unit. Makes sense. Now, let's talk about DSP plugins. As you will have understood, DSP plugins will need external processing to work. But what exactly are these external processors? In fact, they are often a hardware device of a very specific brand that will have to be plugged into the host computer to communicate with it. These external devices will generally only support the plugins of the manufacturer's brand. The most popular DSP processor is probably the Apollo interface from Universal Audio. And the cool the cool thing is that they include high performance processors. This type of processing will work exclusively with its associated hardware device. This can quickly become a problem if you want to use your plugins outside your studio, as you will have to bring the unit with you. So to wrap things up, each type of plugin processing has one pro and one con. The pro of native plugins is their accessibility. As long as you have access to your computer, you have access to your plugins when you want, where you want. But the big con is that you can get stuck if you use too many plugins or that your host processor is not powerful enough. As for DSP plugins, the big pro is that it allows you to free up processing from your host computer and use it for I don't know, other calculations. This is a big advantage for the performance. But the biggest con is that these plugins will not work without their external DSP processing device. You always have to have them with you if you want to use them. So should you use native or DSP plugins? Well, the answer is less simple in this case because it really depends on your computer's performance, but also on how often you have big sessions or not. In all cases, if you have a powerful computer like a Mac Studio or I don't know, a big PC, I don't know what you have, I would say that you don't need any external DSP processing. Same thing if you use your DAW in a very simple way, like if you record vocals on instrumentals or if you simply have small sessions, you don't really need DSP plugins. But you've got the idea. If you often have to work on bigger sessions and that you feel that your computer CPU is not powerful enough, maybe you should think about DSP plugins. You do you. So that is it for this video. It was a very short one today, but I think you don't need more to understand the difference between native and DSP plugins. But if you have questions about this topic, make sure to post them in the comments and I will be very happy to answer them as soon as I can. Before you leave, don't forget to drop your like if you enjoyed this video and also to subscribe to this channel if you want to have more information about music mixing and music production. Thank you for watching. See ya. Bye bye.